the bread of life and open up this word and hear what God would have to say to us. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I want to be a student of the word. And I want to show myself approved of God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing, dividing and handling the word of truth. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but when you're equipped with a sword, you better know how to use it. Because if it's double-edged as this word is and it's sharp, you don't want to hurt somebody with it, right? You don't want to hurt yourself with it. The way that you could hurt yourself is just by misunderstanding it. And that would be your, I won't say goofiness, but that would be your fault. But we want to know how to wield the word of God. Hallelujah. It's a sword. Hallelujah. And we're armored up in the full armor of God. We thank God today. Father, thank you for this time of breaking bread, the word of life with you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you, Lord. You're my strength. You're my rock. You're my redeemer. Lord, give us hearts of good soil, Lord God. Even rototill right now, let the soil of our hearts be ready for the seed of your word, that we would bear fruit 30, 60, and 100-fold, O oh God. We take heed the way, the, way, the way that we hear, that, Lord God, we may, Lord, have an output. We may bear fruit according to it. And it's all for you, Father. Change us tonight. We receive it. We bless you now. Thank you that the devil is defeated. You are exalted, O oh God, and Jesus is Lord. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get right into the word of God. I'm going to go over various scriptures tonight. But I would have us notice that Bishop's been teaching about suddenly. So even up to last Wednesday and the Wednesdays prior, some of our Sunday gatherings, Bishop has taken this platform and he's been preaching from the Word of God about suddenly. And we know that to be that unexpected. And he's pointed out in the scriptures and given us specific moments in scripture about a suddenly. And that where one wasn't expecting it and they were expecting something different as was in the Old Testament with Moses' brother and sister, Aaron and, uh, is it Miriam? Yes. Aaron and Miriam, where the judgment of God came upon them. And then later in the scriptures, where the suddenly of God happened, even as it was in the book of Acts, where they were waiting as the Lord prescribed to them to do, told them to do, and they were waiting in the upper room. If you're familiar with this passage of scripture, it'll come really smooth. But to update everyone, in the book of Acts, Jesus had already went onto the cross, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That's the gospel. When he went to the cross, as we have a Example of it right here, he died for our sin. And when he died for our sin and he hung on that cross, his final words is, it is finished amongst many seven phrases that he said, and then into your hands I would commit my spirit. Because nobody could take his life, but it was for him to offer it up and to give it up. When he was buried in the tomb, he was there. And then on the third day, he rose again. He stayed with his disciples for those days, and then he ascended up into heaven with the angels telling those disciples that were there witnessing all of this and how awesome that would have been to witness that. But there's an encouragement about that, I'll tell you in a minute. And he said that he would, the angels made known that he would return. And we have all throughout scripture that encouragement to wait for his return and to be ready at his return. And that's what I want to talk about tonight, being ready. Because among all this, where we're talking about the suddenly and in the book of Acts, I'll take it further, where they were all waiting as Jesus had told them to wait till you be endued with power from on high. And so then it was on the day of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit was poured out and they were filled with the fire, the baptism of fire that he had promised. Hallelujah. And they spoke in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And that day was so pivotal because it was like the birth of the church began and now the church was empowered. One thing's to be knowledgeable. One thing's to be... Uh, directed and guided, instructed to go out. But another thing entirely is to be equipped to go out, but to be empowered to go out. Hallelujah. We want to be empowered to witness the souls, to bring souls in. Hallelujah. So God didn't leave us without power. He didn't leave us without the ability, but he gave us the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So that we wouldn't have to do it in our mere strength, which is super limited. A lot of us will fall flat to it just with our own laziness and procrastination. Amen? But when you got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, fire burning to push you out, to prod you out, to make you brave, to give you the words, to help you in every way, now we're empowered. Hallelujah. And now he's given it to us to where we have that very testimony and witness 
that we now we can know we're filled with the Holy Spirit with that initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And we pray in the Holy Spirit in this house. Hallelujah. We pray in the Holy Ghost. We've been blessed to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, praying in other tongues. Now we can build ourselves up in the love of God. It's in the Bible describes it in the amplified version like being built up like an edifice, going higher. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but we can all learn to low, to grow in love. Amen. So I want to talk about the readiness tonight. Because it was powerful that Bishop had was preaching about suddenly. And then when we had that opportunity to go fellowship it with that ministry in Stockton, that the word of the Lord through his servant, the pastor and his wife, and even Bishop uh, that was there ministering as a guest speaker, uh, the other bishop, Bishop Sides was his name, that those words came to our pastor, our bishop, about being ready. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but if you've been with this ministry at any point in time, there are specific traits about this ministry. One of them is victory. Hallelujah. Here at Threshing Floor Tabernacle, we walk in the victory of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not letting life get the best of us. We're getting the best of life. Hallelujah. We walk in victory. Another trait of this ministry is power. And I pray this bears witness to you because if you don't see it, I pray that you just open your eyes because it is. It's a fruit and a trait of this ministry. Victory and power. We're after the Holy Ghost power of God. Hallelujah. We don't want to limit God. We let him have his way. Hallelujah. We get out of the way and let God have his way. Another trait of it is that servitude that we want on to the Lord. Hallelujah. And I pray that as you see these traits and all that God wants to do, it makes you ever more in a position of having your heart open that you'd want to be ready for the fullness of what God wants to do. Hallelujah. Because when those, uh, my wife and I and Minister Killings, uh, the Finns, uh, Bishop, Minister Posada, we were there honored to join our pastor to be able to go to that uh, service and witness the word of the Lord at the moment that it was given. And you can go online and get it if you want the link. I'll send it to you. i got to send it to Minister Aquino. But it was such a blessing to hear it live. And you could tell that it wasn't the voice of man and it wasn't the words of man. It wasn't words of flattery, but it was the word of the Lord. And a big part of that was being ready. And I don't know about you, but as we rally alongside our bishop and our pastor and they receive a word of readiness, we would want to be ready. Hallelujah. And our pastor has spoken uh, candidly. Uh, gently as a pastor would. He's a, oh, hallelujah. If you don't see the, the anointing of a pastor on our bishop, open your eyes and see how he loves the people of God. I got to tell you this, that there's a lot of people that carry around titles of things in the body of Christ, but they don't serve in those capacities as God would have them. When it comes to a pastor, a pastor is that under shepherd with the care for God's people and a heart for God's people, the one that would go out and fight the wolves and the lions when it's trying to attack the sheep, that kind, hallelujah. Where I've seen our pastor, when individuals had come in for fellowship and were coming in, this was, you know, some years back, coming in, critiquing the service and thinking that they were sent by the Lord to share some words with our pastor, like, this is out of order or whatever, you know. And they're coming in there like that. I've seen our pastor turn in the anointing of God and the firmness of God where it left some individuals crying just to see him like that. I kid you not. Because you know how like uh, when something pops off and you see dad get after someone or you didn't see that side of him before? You know what I'm saying? And you're like, oh, man, it kind of like just everyone starts to get a little somber like, whoa, that just happened. But he stood up like a David and rebuked those individuals and told them to get out of the church. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with that. When somebody's out of order and they're, they're coming in the spirit of a demon, you address that thing and, and tell them to leave. Amen? And they weren't coming for good. They were coming for harm. And they were already affecting an individual in, in the body. And that's why they thought they could come in because they knew the individual. And they were already making, messing that person up with some theology and, and, and doctrine that did not align with the word of God. And there's your fruit. Because the individual is getting quirky. And these people think that they're knowing God. But you got to see the, the true service of a pastor, one that would love God's sheep, one that would be on their face praying when you don't know. Hallelujah. And the way that I've been able to see and witness alongside the man of God, his service and love for God and love for his people, even loving his enemies, you come to know what a true pastor is and a servant of God. Man, when you see Jesus through somebody's life, 
I don't know about you, but it's inspiring because then you know it's real, hallelujah, and you know it's achievable, hallelujah, because what he'd do in one person, he's not afraid or going to limit for it to come to you, hallelujah, where somebody like our pastor can love his enemies, you can love your enemies and pray for them, hallelujah, and I want to say this, I'm going to attach it both ways, that when you receive a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward, this is the word of God, hallelujah, now, if, if you know that this is a pastor, an apostle, a bishop, when you receive him in that office sent from God, biblical, backed up with biblical scripture, then you can receive of that reward. Hallelujah. Because they're not coming on their own volition. They're not coming to you just as man, but they're coming to you on behalf of God. Hallelujah. And you can receive him in that office and receive him as that gift, and therefore you can receive of that reward. Or when you acknowledge this, you can receive of all the blessings and the care and God wants to use the five-fold ministry to equip the body so that we could do the work of ministry. Hallelujah. We got it all backwards where we're thinking that the five-folds to go do the work of ministry while we do I don't know what, right? While we, I don't know, are distracted. No, we're, they are the five-fold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers come to equip the saints, all of us, for the work of ministry. And that work of ministry is in every area of our life, and we can go out and do that work. Hallelujah. It is a mother caring for their children to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. No mom is out of this. No dad is out of this, right? In their house, when they're doing the laundry, when they're paving the way for their children to be able to get under the word of God. And you may think and feel that I'm being overlooked because I'm doing all this, but I'm facilitating it for a generation. Hallelujah. That nobody's out of this. When you're praying and nobody's looking, nobody seems to want rewards of, of God when they close the closet and... Who, who wants a reward from God? Those are the ones that stand. Hallelujah. There's some rewards. We're sending up timber before God to build a place in heaven. Hallelujah. Where there, the dust and the moths and all the corrosion can't touch that what's going up there. And we're sending up timber to God. Lord, we're paving and making a way. Hallelujah. Because you told us you made a place for us. Hallelujah. And that there is rewards and store up our treasures in heaven that our heart may be there also. Hallelujah. Where we're looking to God for that reward. So therefore, you can receive from the office of a five-fold ministry gift, even of a, as a brother to, in the Lord or a sister in the Lord, receiving of that reward as you receive him as such. But we have to posture our heart to be able to receive. Hallelujah. Now, here's the thing, and I wanted to attach it both ways, as our bishop is a wonderful example of loving his enemies. Well, God said to pray for your enemies. Hallelujah. So when you think you can't even get a reward from your enemy, God will work it out to where he rewards you even as you're praying for your enemies. Hallelujah. So you can, reward from the, you can receive reward from the gifts of God and the blessings of God, and you can receive a reward from, from God even in the face of your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk to you about three things that I believe are crucial areas that will either facilitate and, and, and really make the way for, to overcome and experience the victory, victory and have the readiness that we want to have when God moves mightily in every way that he wants to in this place. Or you can, these will be areas that are not shored up that will impede being ready. You get that? I don't know about you, but I want to facilitate it in every way. I want to get it. I want to just make the way for God to make me ready. Hallelujah. For everything that he wants to do. Hallelujah. Are you in agreement? I don't know about you, but I don't want to be, not be ready. Who wants, to, who wants to not be ready when Jesus returns? No, you don't. <laughs> who wants to be ready when Jesus returns, when Christ returns? Hallelujah. To find us a bride ready without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. Find us praying. Find us serving. Find us doing something that would just bless him. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be awesome that we're preaching the gospel when he returns and the sound of the trump is made, hallelujah, and we're found preaching the gospel, or we're found praying, we're found in the house of God, we're found serving, we're found loving our children, hallelujah, we're found loving our enemies, but we're ready, hallelujah. Those three areas I want to talk about this night are about our attitude, hallelujah. That's an easy one. Because when anyone says attitude, usually it has an interesting uh, negative connotation. I think because when we're in dialogue with one another, you usually say, oh, you have an attitude, but it's not necessarily a positive thing, right? But we want to have the right attitude. Hallelujah. We want to have the right attitude. 
I want to talk about accountability. Nobody wants to be accountable anymore, it seems. Now, when it comes to your job, we have to be accountable. We have to clock in on time, show up. Otherwise, we lose that job. And when it comes to things where we get a benefit out of it and we have a consequence, we seem to line up a little bit more. But when it's coming out of our own servitude or willingness, we don't understand where the consequences are. Because if you think you could just walk away from the Lord now and have no consequence, you're, you're misguided. And if you think that you can, we'll go back to the attitude even as well and kind of correlate those together. If you think that you can treat anybody any old way, there's a reckoning that will come. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 talks about it, that every man will, will come before the judgment seat of Christ to give an account of those things done in the body, whether good or bad. And that we're even accountable, the word says, for every idle word. But we don't think that there's consequence. And we don't want to shore up our behavior. We don't want to shore up our attitude. We don't want, we don't want to do things God's way. But there's accountability. Hallelujah. And accountability is a beautiful thing. Accountability brings freedom. Accountability brings stewardship. And it really is there to, uh, to develop that genuine humility in the life of a believer. Hallelujah. Where you would open up your life to someone else for them to speak into it. And we'll talk about that. And then that area that's vitally important. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive kind of keys of these areas where it would just help us to be ready. But the area of devotion to God, hallelujah, and our devotion to where we're diligent about setting aside a time with him and seek his face, to be in his word daily, to pray, hallelujah. We don't have to make it difficult. Five minutes beginning with that will make a world of difference, hallelujah. And it will definitely kickstart that relationship that, you know, we've been putting off and that relationship with God that we can't ignore. Hallelujah. Because I don't know about you, but as a believer, when you've been enlightened to God and who he is, there's no turning back from him because he's awesome. Hallelujah. He done disrupted and messed up your life in a good way. And you, you're changed forever. Hallelujah. When you encounter the mighty God, you're changed forever. Hallelujah. When I gave my life to Christ at 16, as I mentioned earlier, on my way home, being uh, drove by Minister Aquino's dad, I believe it was that day, and he was encouraging me and, you know, congratulating me on my experience with Christ. At least it was that or maybe some following Sundays. I just remember feeling the vulnerability of not really knowing what I had did, you know, because a lot of people think when, whether we're ministering to him out on the street or they think that, like, they have to be a part of a certain church. We want him to come in and be a part of what God's doing here. But it wasn't like necessarily getting your name on the roll call and you better be there and we're going to make sure. No, it's like that. Your name is written in heaven. Hallelujah. In the Lamb's book of life. That's where you want it to be, where it can't be blotted out. You don't want it to be. Hallelujah. But that accountability and that devotion to God, we want it. Hallelujah. I want to share a few scriptures with you. And lean in with me. As we, as we lean in and rally around the, the light of God's word over the readiness that God wants us to have in a moment like this. It's not a carrot that's dangled before us. Come on, I need you to get this. God isn't trying to bait us with promises that he's not willing to fulfill. I got to talk to you about the, oh man. In Hebrews chapter 11. Brother Caleb, pull up the last uh, verse in Hebrews chapter 11, please. Or Sister Shanice, thank you so much. And give God thanks for your brother Caleb and sister Shanice back there tonight. Hallelujah. All the AV folks. Sister Gabby, she normally runs the second camera. God bless her. Continuing what God did too, because in this pool on Sunday, there were some that were baptized. Hallelujah. There were some that were baptized right in this pool right here in a holy moment, fulfilling the word of God. And right here, a young man sat and he was even instructed to sit down. Evangelist Kwame Mays, hallelujah. Give God thanks for his ordination. These kind of things enable us to have growth for the whole body. Because I don't know about you, but it wasn't just for him that it benefits. It benefits this whole body because it uncaps a growth that we have yet to see. We haven't seen it before. Come on. And the growth that would happen would be a blessing to him and, through the, and to the ministry. But in the ministry, it's a blessing. Because it indicates growth from God and promotion from God that we can all experience. And it all causes us all to level up. Hallelujah. God had uh, touched the heart of Minister Killings and uh, Sister Shantavia 
to have Sister Zariah water baptized. And she's so lovely, young, lovely young lady, amen? And she stood on this platform with us with Sister Hannah as well, singing the praises of God for AOH boot camp. And then to see her get water baptized as she fulfilled the command of the Lord to be water baptized was beautiful. And she knew what she was doing, and that's important to know what you're doing when you get water baptized. But I want us to lean in on this. And then also, I do, I do want to acknowledge the rest, because when I said Sister Gabby, Sister Octavia Miller got water baptized, and it was powerful. Evangelist Mays got water baptized again, and it was glorious. Hallelujah. A lot of times, uh, when God does something, we have to be a good steward of what he does. We can't forget it. You know how quickly we move on from stuff. We do. We'll watch one movie and move on to the next, and we forgot what happened in the first movie, right? And that's, that's merely for our entertainment, but you catch what I'm saying. But when God moves, hallelujah, it's got to stay with us. you got to pray it, and you got to think about it. Something powerful, our bishop had instructed me, uh, and, and some of us, when we went to a conference in Southern California under the, the ministry of Evangelist Morris Cirillo, it was powerful, and one thing he said that even if you, when we got back, he said, even if you got to sit in your room and just begin to think about what happened, let it be stirred up again. Because when God does a move, even if you got to sit there for a moment and just remember how good you felt in that moment and with the powerful thing he did, trust me, the anointing will fall again. Hallelujah. The freshness of what God had did will stay with you and you can build upon it. You always build upon it. Hallelujah. You don't look to try to rehearse one thing. You build upon what God did. Hallelujah. Because you want to go higher. If you have a powerful service, we don't need to have the pressure of trying to recreate it again. We come in and build on what God did and go higher. Hallelujah. We don't have to sing the same song. We don't have to stay in the same position. If he instructs us to, so be it by the Holy Ghost. But we can build on it and we can be fresh again because he's a mighty God. He's the true and living God and he's moving. Hallelujah. Moving fresh. This scripture right here, I want to get to it. And I didn't mean to omit anyone if you experienced a powerful experience from God even as Brother Jarrett did, who's on the front row, and his lovely family. Hallelujah. Welcome them. We've been praying for all of you. And Desiree and Connor and Arabella, God bless you all. She's four months old, and she's munching on her feet, and she's right there at the seat, and she faces no defeat. Hallelujah. She's in the house of God. Lean in with me as we focus on being ready, because look at how he blessed the life of Jarrett. Let that be your family member. When you see Jarrett, let it remind you of what God can do for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter, uh, Brother Caleb, let's see. Yeah, this one's good. Chapter 11, verse 40. God, having provided some better thing, uh, let's take it back a couple verses, please, Sister Shanice. Uh, maybe 38. Oh, man, that's so good. This one's so good. I'm looking forward to getting it to 37, please. <clears throat> Uh, sorry, one more. Thank you so much. So this is talking about those that were listed in what we call the Hall of Fame of Faith Heroes, the Hall of Faith Heroes in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11, because the start of the whole chapter says, now faith is. So go and read it. Let it bless you. It's talking about faith. It goes on to talk about that without faith, it's impossible to please God. It goes on to talk about those who operated in faith and carried out great things. And I, we have to focus on this because we have to be ready and we have to be motivated by faith. Here we are. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Next verse, please. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. Come on, this ought to make us humble. Some of this is still happening, happening in other nations, the persecution that is. And a lot of it can be really fierce for those to where they even hold churches underground. Where they're not able to do as we're doing with microphone in hand, amplified sound, free to do this. Doors unlocked, and we're free in the United States of America to worship our God. Hallelujah. Well, there's others, other brothers and sisters who are out there being persecuted for the faith. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. We're tempted. We're slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. Oh, man, of whom the world was not worthy. Come on, I pray that that brings you to a sober place. Stay with me, come on. Of whom the world was not worthy. Because we walk around people, right? And we, taught, we spoke earlier about receiving rewards from God where many wouldn't even see it. 
And many would disdain these that is being recorded right here. And the way that they were treated was inhumane. A lot of times, when, from human to human, even as it's been in wars, and I think some of the comments about the Vietnam War, what they tried to do is get the soldiers to not think of them as like a human so that they would have no kind of sympathy for the enemy. You catch, my, you catch what I'm saying? So then even as people are watching this, then you, you look at it, you almost like shut down or turn in a way where you're thinking of it as inhumane and that they were, had such disdain against them. These believers that, were, that are being talked about and the recorded in the word of God who suffered this kind of persecution, that the world wasn't even worthy of them. Come on. Isn't that powerful? That God deemed it to where they suffered for him and for the gospel, that he says the world's not even worthy of these people that wandered the earth in our day. Hallelujah. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. All And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. They didn't even receive the promise of the word that they were waiting for. What was that specifically? The coming Messiah, Jesus Christ. They had the prophetic word in the Old Testament talking about the Messiah to come. And when they were serving intently and fiercely, they didn't even see it come to pass. But by faith, they finished their race, hallelujah, and waited. And they wouldn't even receive the promise. They received a good report, hallelujah. Next verse, please. God, having provided some better thing for us, and now we're on this side of it. Hallelujah. Where the Messiah, Jesus Christ, has come, where the fulfillment of the prophetic word has come to pass about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and all that he would do in fulfilling it on the cross. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they, might, they without us should not be made perfect. Because of that good report and great faith that they had, it was even concerned, considered a certain perfection in the eyes of God when they fulfilled their race. Hallelujah. But they weren't to be made in their entirety apart from us. What does that mean? Then in our day, we are them now. Hallelujah. And we are the church on this side of it. Hallelujah. We are the believers on this side of, of the fulfillment of the word of God with Christ having come and died for our sins. We're now a benefactor of what he already did. Hallelujah. Here we are 2,000 plus years later, still reaping the benefits of being the church, of being Christians. Hallelujah. Of being disciples of God. Without, and that without us should not be made perfect. I got to encourage you with this. That how many of us could be counted as those that even if we didn't receive the promise would still be faithful? Come on. Because we, we even diminish it down to where they're believing for the Messiah. They're believing for deliverance. They're believing for victory. And in the uh, book of Revelation, you can read all about it. Because the saints that had been persecuted are even crying out for vengeance of God. Like, Lord, when are you going to make it right for those that persecuted us? And God's like, I will. Hallelujah. He will bring vengeance in the day. He, will, he is a true judge. Hallelujah. Because he already promised. How many of us get tripped up to where we're just believing for a car? And then we're, we're believing for a house. And if that doesn't come to pass, we're ready to turn our back on God. But these individuals right here were believing for so much more. They were believing for God's word to come to pass, not something necessarily to benefit them. How many of us would be willing to turn our back on the Lord because of whatever promise? And I'm not counting any of it light or dull by any means. I'm not trying to disrespect what you would believe in God for and what he told you. But how many of us would be willing to let God turn it around? Hallelujah. How many of us would, would let it be that we would be those of a good report that held fast to our faith in God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then let it be to where it could be said of us that the world's not even worthy of those. That we would be one of those that walk the earth and that the world wasn't even worthy of us because of our faith in God and our trust in God. We have to be adamant about our faith. Hallelujah. I rehearse to you again now that with this readiness, we have to let God change our attitude. Two particular ways about this. That with, and I want to I bring it all into how God is allowing us to receive through his servants, you know, Bishop and Pastor Lucia, through the word of God. Because how many of you know with an attitude, you can't have an attitude of like no one can tell me nothing. You can't have an attitude to where you could think you could just walk around in life and be any old way. When God is prescribing to us the character and nature of Christ that we're to follow and aspire to and let be developed in us. Hallelujah. 
Let us see if we're in the faith. Let us match it up. This is a mirror. And we're to see if we're, we're in the faith and we're to see what matches up in our life with this. We don't have to try to justify ourselves to one another or let it be the standard of men. Let it be the standard of God that we arise to. Hallelujah. Jesus is Christ. I, I know everyone in this house would say amen that Jesus Christ is compassionate. Yes. Where he was forgiving. Where he would say, go and sin no more. He could have joined those that were stone, ready to stone, right? He, knew the, he, he was the fulfillment of the law. So he knew the law and he knew where judgment could come. But Jesus was willing to be forgiving. He was compassionate. Let us be compassionate. Hallelujah. How many of you know God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love? Hallelujah. Let us be slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. How many of us can be so triggered by our brother and sister or by our family member or by somebody driving by us on the, on the road that we'd be so triggered and we don't operate in love? we got to let love kick in. Hallelujah. And let it be a, a moment turned around for the glory of God. When the cashier in line is just absolutely rude, why, not, why should, let's do this. Let's do this right here. Because we're not to be overcome with evil, but we're to overcome with good. Hallelujah. And why am I pointing to this? Because it's our faith. Hallelujah. And it's about overcoming this year. It's about our faith and it's about overcoming. Don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Hallelujah. I'll help you remember that one. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. So 12 and then flip it around, 21, right? 12, 21. 1, 2, 2, 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. You're welcome. Go and fulfill that scripture. Hallelujah. Remember it. Memorize it. Don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. we got to be willing to be changed. Hallelujah. Let's be accountable. Accountable to God. We're accountable to this word, whether we like it or not, where we'll stand before God and we'll have to give an account of those things done in the body, whether good or bad, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Let's be accountable now. Let's be accountable about the change. That if someone comes, hallelujah, that's a blessing from a husband to a wife. Is that learn how to know to be accountable one toward another and be a blessing. Not to weaponize everything and come at each other, well, you know, you're really awful at this. And then you come back, well, you know, like, well, you're really awful at that. Why, why can't it let it be? To, okay, and then let's be the productive one, right? So we come, maybe it was a little harsh. Maybe it wasn't the way we liked it relayed. Then say, okay, um, I'm hearing what you're saying. I'm a little hurt. Why can't we just be honest? Why can't we just like bring the temperature down a little bit? Hallelujah, and be mature. Why can't we just say, okay, I hear what you're saying. That hurt, I receive it. I'm going to chew on it, and I'm going to change. How it would bless the other one. And then they'd be stuck. And then it'd be like, if they got mad that you received it like that. And like, well, yeah, it really is bad. <laughs> it triggers them even more. But just keep saying, oh, I love you and I got this. And it looks like I need to step away for a minute. Let me step away and I'll come back when we're ready to talk about it. And it's just not far-fetched. Come on. Are we not the children of God or not? Can we not let the character of Christ develop within us to change us to handle situations the way God would want it? Hallelujah. Let's be accountable. So we already have a blessing marriage couples of accountability. But those of us that would be single too, it's right before Almighty God, we got the Holy Word of God. We got our brothers and sisters in Christ. Can't we receive them if they'd come in love? Hallelujah. And if they came a harsh way, can we at least hear what they're saying? Hallelujah. For the, for the avenues of life that you would trust, such as the body of Christ, where God would want to minister change. Come on, open up your life to the Word of God. Let them get in there. Let, God, uh, let Jesus throw over the tables of what doesn't displease him. Hallelujah. And let's get that devotion locked in. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Let's get our devotion locked in with the Lord. Come on. If there's days, I'm talking about days passing by where we haven't got into the word, that's not right. Can we say that's not right? That's not right. Especially when we've had an instruction in the house. So as a body at TFT, we're to be reading in the book of Romans right now. So you already have your assigned reading. So it's easy. It's like, where do I read in the Bible? I don't know where to begin. I'm going to read Exodus again, and then I'll try to get through it. No, we'll start with the book of Romans right now. And read the word of God. Don't let it be days that pass by. Come on, your soul and your spirit's hungry. It's to be fed the word of God and built up with the word of God. We feed ourselves so much other things, and those things are, bending, are, are, are wreaking havoc in us in, in us in a way that we're not, we're not observing. 
And that didn't come out very clear at all. I'll try again. There's things that we're entertaining, giving our ear to, giving our eyes to, that are not benefiting us. Come on. But the word of God won't let you down. You'll be blessed every time you open the Bible and read it. Hallelujah. And then if you apply it, you're not only a reader, you're not only a listener, but you're a doer of the word of God. Hallelujah. We won't want to be a hearer only. We want to be a doer of the word. We got enough hearers out there. And that's what I wanted to talk about a pastor. You got all these individuals that are online, social media, that are, that are claiming to be pastors, but they're not even the ones that are in with you in the building. They're not even in the building with you. You think it is gathering online virtually and that they're just looking at a number apart from being able to stand against a wolf or a bear that would come against your life and calling themselves a pastor. You can't call them your pastor. Don't give them that honor. Give the honor to those that God has assigned. Can't we be humble enough to adhere to God's word and do it his way? We're not to forsake the fellowshipping of ourselves together. You can stand to your feet. I'm not mad at no one, so don't think I was mad. I'm mad. Yeah, passionate. Hallelujah. Passion, people. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to close this out and land the plane in 60 seconds. Let's lock in our devotion. Hallelujah. We've gathered around the campfire of God's word tonight. Hallelujah. And if you've been blessed and if you've been heart's been pricked and touched, it's only by the word of God. I've recited to you scriptures, and I'll be happy to give them to you after service even. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Come on. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Check those out. Hebrews chapter 11, last verse, verse 40. Check it out. Read it again. Come on, let's go all for what God has for us, that we, church, are ready in the time to be ready in his moving, that we're ready for all that he wants to do, to bring in the Jarrett's and his family and his cousin, hallelujah, to bring in those of our family members, to bring in our, our whole neighborhood, hallelujah, our whole city for the glory of God. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you right now. Lord, we've gathered around your word tonight. We've gathered around the truth of your word tonight. We've gathered around the truth of your word tonight. We've rallied around the truth of your word. And we want in every way to be ready, Lord God. We don't let this word fall to the ground. We uphold it, Lord. We adhere to it. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Psalm 119, verse 105. And we thank you tonight, Lord. We love you. Do the work in each and every believer's life in this place all the way from myself here at this platform, all around this room, from the eldest to the youngest, Lord, from the ordained to the parishioner, Lord God. Do your work and your will. We bless our pastors, Bishop Henry and Pastor Lucia Killings. We love them, Lord, as, as they are away doing your will. Father, we thank you and we bless them. We love you tonight. Thank you that the devil is defeated, Lord God. You are exalted. And Jesus, you are Lord. We bless you now and always. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. Give God praise and thanks. If you're in need of prayer in any way, uh, you can meet us here, the ministers, and I'll call up uh, those of us ministers. If you're in need of prayer, see us after service. God bless you. Be blessed as you go. I speak the blessing of the Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you keep us. Let your face shine upon us. Watch over us. See us safely where we go. And that, Lord God, the enemy will not be able to snatch the word away, but we mix it with faith. May it bear fruit in our lives. We love you. Bless and refresh your people in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.